Hi, this is Zara Fuzzle, the voice of Halo, and you're listening to Whelmed, the Young Justice Files. Recognized, Uncle Walker, D-0-1. Recognize, the Caleb G, D-0-2. Recognized, Joe Moniak, D-0-5. Welcome to Whelmed, Season 4. My name is Rich. And first of all, I'm here. And second of all, I'm here with my former co-host and co-creator of the show... The Caleb G. Hello, Caleb. Hello, Rich. I'm back in the cave. <laughs> yes. It's wonderful. The cave blew up. We went to the watchtower. Yeah. We're somewhere else now. We went I don't to even someone's know basement. Where we are. I think we're actually, I think we're actually in uh, one of Green Arrow's caches right now. Uh, weapons well, cache. Probably somewhere. We're, we're also in Dayton at a catacon. Yeah, because Green Arrow gets here a lot. It's a Dayton cache. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Oliver's got to go around the world. Yeah, he's got to do. His Dayton's thing. a hub. He's a he's a leaguer, man. Yeah. He's got to go everywhere. Yeah. I'm That's here right. too, producer Neil. Oh yes. And also, like, it's weird being this physically close to each other <laughs> recording. This is wild. This is... I'm excited. That's really funny. Also, so... the first time I've met both of you in person. No, you and I have done stuff together, but not at the same time. Not at the same. Because he's never been in a catacomb. Right. This is the first time Rich and I are physically yes. in the same meat space. I can reach out and touch him. Yes, he's with touching my me right now. Yes, just yeah. because you know podcasting. Whoa. Yeah. There you go. No, but you guys have been in the same space, right? Yeah. Do we, need, do we need oh, all? Yes. I'm trying. I'm no. trying to do what's yes. happening right now. Um, cut, cut all that out. Nope. No. no. <laughs> none of that. Nope. None of it. It's all staying in. Yep. Yeah, so we decided to do a thing. Uh, Caleb and I have been talking about doing an episode where you wanted to talk about DC magic. Yeah. For a while. And then we Years. got Then we got season four and it was like. Well, that's more important. Huge arcs. Yeah. Of Massive. magic. Yeah. So much magic. So much magic. Yeah, so we thought, hey, we're here. Yeah. Neil's got to get to an airplane. We said, too bad. Set your recording gear up. They're holding the airplane right, <laughs> yes, now. right now. They're on the tarmac. <laughs> and and you've got like the a, you got like a three minute layover between your yeah. flights. Yeah. yeah I've yeah, literally it's, looked it's, at maps to know where I need to run. You just teleport to the other terminal. Well, you just got to say it backwards and you'll get there. <laughs> well, instead of, you know, hey, when was the first time you watched Young Justice? How about we just catch up? What have you been doing for years? Oh, God, my The God. last time we recorded was what, 20? 17? I have no idea. Time doesn't mean anything it anymore. It means nothing anymore. No. I have no idea. We, we, I have a child. Yes. I, I own a house. You've had a child since the last time we recorded. Yes. She's, she's now, now four and a half. <laughs> she's in school. She's a terror. And, yes. and she's wonderful. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Yes. And then you also, you were just talking about you just moved. Yeah, we moved. We bought a house. What job else? job changes since season one for sure, right? Like yeah. you had a job and then you same, moved to a different same company, just different roles in the same department. More and more responsibility, but also I'm working at home a lot now, which means I don't do much. Okay. When I can. Yeah, so sure. I, I you know. You use your work time more efficiently so that you end up that is having such some time. an HR appropriate way of putting it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. In case my boss happens to listen to this yes. podcast, right. that is what I'm doing. I'm yes. not goofing off watching. <laughs> no, not at all. I, I've gotten up. I am eating breakfast while I'm looking at the computer. Yeah. I'm just being efficient yeah. with all of the what you yeah, do. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and we're at a catacomb right now. Yes, we are at and a catacomb. So, let's talk about that. Okay. So, we are here at a catacomb 10. Believe it or not, this is our 10th anniversary of Public Academicons. Started in Michael's basement, Michael from the RPG Academy. Right. Which is your other big gig that you do, right? That's how More we met. That is basically. how we met, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Michael started the RPG Academy. I was a fan. I foolishly said, hey, if you ever need help, let me know. And then I got hooked. <laughs> and he kept me on it for years. So we, we developed the Academy podcast into what it is. We launched a catacomb into what it is now. We literally started in his basement with just him and his buddies. Mm -hmm. That was the first time I physically met him. I drove to some dude's house in Cincinnati and hung out in his basement for three days with a bunch of strangers. <laughs> and we played a bunch of games. And I still have memories of that event and the games wow. I ran. You told me a story about a banana There earlier. was a banana involved. <laughs> yes. um, I, I ran 
two back-to-back games of Dread, the same story with different groups. They both played very differently and they both ended the exact same way, which was just a wonderful experiment yeah. in gaming. Yeah, and if you're not familiar with Dread, Dread is a game, but there's no dice. So the right. game mechanic uses... A Jenga tower. Uh, exactly. So it wants to... It, it uses the Jenga tower to give you that visceral Sense reaction. Of horror. Yeah. yeah. Fear. Yeah, you get that anxiety, fear yeah. feeling. So yes. it use, it's a way it's using non-dice mechanics to build up this visceral reaction, which yeah. I think is genius. It's fantastic. And Michael runs a yearly game of Scooby-Doo Dread here oh, at yeah. Akatakon where he has a a game planned out and everyone plays the Scooby gang and we have to investigate what happened to Scooby all those years ago. It's wonderful. So a catacon has developed from Michael's basement to the Dayton convention center. Yes. We at one point were in the middle of the woods in a creepy, creepy lodge with vultures. That's why there's vultures everywhere. Starting the basement, creep, creepy lodge in the woods. This is an interesting choice that you decided yeah. to hook yeah. yourself up with. I made mistakes is what I'm saying. <laughs> um, but here we are. And now we've been able to meet. We've been able to uh, build a wonderful community. I have not been as involved in the planning and prep of a catacon. I have not been as involved with the RPG Academy podcast. Obviously, I had to step away from the cave and whelmed due yeah. to job and family. But I'm uh, trying to get back into things now that the kiddo's at school and I have some free time. Yeah. So just being able to socialize and see the community and revitalize all these friends that I've made over the years that yeah. uh, I've spent so many wonderful hours with uh, on the internet is wonderful. I think, it, I think there's a lot of people, a lot of people in the audience are going to relate to that even just over the last couple of years. Oh, like absolutely. We're all, this is the first convention of any kind I was been going to really i oh, yeah. pop, popped over to the general area of san diego comic-con this last year just to see a couple friends and then went home but you know here it's like seeing people i haven't seen michael in years you know neil and i see each other quite often because you know we just make that happen but i haven't seen anybody else yeah and so now it's like well you know i think i'm my getting some more bandwidth back life changes too right mm-hmm. job changes and we just moved uh two thousand miles from where we used to live and so all of that, and uh, kids are getting a little bit older, they're a little bit more independent too, so you know, I had some bandwidth, and so coming in and doing the exact same thing, it's yeah. like, you know what, I want to start reconnecting to the world <laughs> instead of being isolated so much. Well, this is awesome. It's great to be able to actually, <laughs> I can't believe we started a podcast and we'd never met each other. Yeah. But I just knew you on Twitter. <laughs> yes, you <laughs> did. There's that guy. Yes, you I did. see that guy. That was it. It was it. And you badgered me to help me. do. I, let me help you. I don't know. I don't know. Let I, me help you. I think it was all caps, too. Like, I to think me. it was. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and it worked out great. Um, so we want to talk about magic. I mean, DC Comics magic. Yeah. So what is it about? Why, why that particular subject for you? Of all the things that we've done about this show. Because it hurts Superman. Great. No, that's not it. No, no, no. Um, I just like magic a lot. I don't know why. I, it feels like an interesting thing to me mm-hmm. in a world of superheroes and super technology and aliens. Something that is so kind of grounded in fiction, so grounded in mythology. Right, right. That it's still part of these new fairy tales that we're telling these new hero myths we're telling that it's still around it's always appealing to me anytime it shows up on screen it it strikes me as something that is more i guess kind of talented and unique to bring to a a superhero fight Mm -hmm. it's not just well i have i paid a bunch of money and i have gadgets i've been learning martial arts for years i studied this knowledge right I i learned I mastered something that is very, very difficult. Not that martial arts aren't difficult. No, of course, right. Yeah, yeah. It, it just strikes me as unique. Yeah. Even though it's very prevalent in the comics, it's everywhere. Right. It's just cool. I just like it. There's something about like when we started getting superhero movies, right? And people are like, oh, it's a superhero genre. And I'm like, well, that's not how comics work at all, by the way. <laughs> like they're, it's every genre, right? But to take something like the, the Marvel movies, right? And you're, or, or Young Justice, and you're, you're taking something, it's like, okay, we get science fiction, futuristic stuff, right? We get, like, secret agent-y kind of stuff or whatever. 
but you're also taking magic. You're taking high science fiction, right? You're taking ancient fantasy. You're taking every genre, mm -hmm. and you are mashing it together in one location yeah. and having them all interact with, you know, interact with each other. And in season four, which we'll be talking about soon, hopefully, at some point, you're mixing and matching stuff with like, you're getting like whole arcs where it's like, oh, look, it's Justice League Dark, right? Yeah. And you're getting whole arcs where there's different genres actually being focused on, you know, a whole arc on Mars with Martians. So getting all those things mashed together and seeing how they mix together and what they do. And the thing in DC is there's all these different kinds of magic, mm -hmm. right? And so I just remember Clarion using his magic against Zatanna and then being like, oh, that's baby magic. And he starts doing the reciting backwards thing, which I've never seen before, where right. they start discussing what are these different types of magic, as mm -hmm. opposed to like Shazam's magic, which is more like gandalf wizard magic, yeah. right? So you've got Justice League Dark, you've got characters like John Constantine, who we have not seen yet. Are there particular, is there a particular thing about the magic systems characters in particular that jump out at you that you really like that's kind of like a gateway for you getting into what the magic is story arcs or storylines that have jumped out to you i'm a huge fan of john constantine and hellblazer yeah urban fantasy is one of my favorite genres of writing of games anything so that kind of character that walks the border between these different worlds that right. John is, uh -huh. is very appealing to me. John is such a flawed character. Yeah. He's such a real person yeah. and his characterization. Well, I think with John Constantine, word, Neil, cut that out. With John Constantine, one of his, obviously it stays in now, but one of the <laughs> things with him is, and I think a lot of the magic, if you think like alien technology or aliens in general, it's just like weirdly accepted. Yeah. With, little to no question but like magic is still questioned mm -hmm. i think there's a lot of allure to that because like even in young justice it's like wait do you do you do real magic no you just got a thing under the table that right. you're faking it it's like oh yeah like so there's still these questions behind that power and i think that there's a lot of draw to that because it's not just this unquestioned like you know superman comes down he's an alien he does alien stuff that's right. cool but it's like, okay, but wait, John, what are you doing? Right. What yeah. price are you paying? Yeah. How is this working? And, and John, too, is such a different kind of... He just feels like he's just a guy who happens to stumble on things yes. and is trying to do things. But you don't look at... I don't look at John anyway. You may be different. I don't look at John Constantine and go like, oh, John Constantine the sorcerer. No. No, that's not who he is. He's not Zatanna. He's not Dr. Fate. He's a guy who's got like an artifact in his pocket who he kind of knows how to do a thing because he talked to a devil one time right. and managed to like convince him to give him the locked word. Like it's a whole different makes, kind of thing. And he makes mistakes and he doesn't know what he's doing half the time. Right. And he's haunted by so many of his previous mistakes. mistakes. And he's trying to do the right thing. Usually. Yeah. And there's different versions of the character somewhere. He's right. a little bit more pure detective that happens to have that magic coin in his pocket. Right. And more sometimes where he's more a little bit in control. He's, he owns a house of mystery. Right. He, he has so much knowledge that he's picked up over the years. And sometimes he fluctuates between these two. But yeah. he's such an interesting character to me. Love Zatanna. Love Dr. Fate. If we really, really dig back into the history of Caleb. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a magician. Okay. I wanted to be a stage magician. Like a stage magician. Yeah, absolutely. I was in the Junior Society of American Magicians. I took really? magic classes for... This is awesome. Maybe a year, maybe two. Uh -huh. I did some stage performing. It is one of the biggest regrets of my life that I did not continue uh -oh. in those classes. Yeah. yeah. And I was a kid. I was probably eight or uh -huh. 10. And I distinctly, as, as bad as my memories are of my childhood, I distinctly remember like going through a pros and cons list of not continuing magic classes and making the decision not to yeah and as much as i respect the chance to make my decision yeah. as a person learning how to make decisions sure i wish someone would have just kicked my butt and said S keep doing what you're doing yeah it's your passion do it's your thing. passion yeah i i could have been a magician <laughs> so i've i've always been very fascinated with stage magic i love how as a stage magician you are skillfully lying mm -hmm. 
And the audience is there to accept that lie. Mm -hmm. I love Houdini. I love the research he did into the charlatans who were right. taking advantage of people right. with the, the fake uh, fortune telling, with the fake medium spiritualism that right. were just abusing their customers. Yeah. And I love how he did so much work to debunk that. Yes. And how while some stage magicians bleed that line between, oh, I'm a real mentalist, I'm a real spiritualist, and others are like, hey, look at me do a trick. But it was really good. You don't know how I did it. Hi, I'm going to pretend to do this. You don't know how I did it. Right. That is fascinating to me as just an audience member, as a performer, as someone who loves telling stories where we're weaving these lies and bringing people in for a good time. Yeah. I think the Penn and Teller show where like you try and fool, they try and fool them. It, yeah. It's magical because you, well, that's my bad. But, <laughs> but you literally have the audience who's come to yeah. see that it happened while there's two professionals who are like, trying oh, I know to how you did that. break it down the yeah. entire time. Yeah. And it's still, they get stumped sometimes, yeah. which is amazing. And you, you're just baffled. Yeah. There's the other show I watched where I liked the first season called Magic for Humans. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? Yeah. That, the, some of the stuff that guy pulls off too, it's just like, what? Yeah. And, and he's like, oh, actually we thought people wouldn't really like this. It's kind of a basic 101 magic trick. And I'm like, how is that? Yeah. A basic what? Actual magic, actual sleight of hand, yeah, is such a skilled art. Learning what to do yeah. to lie to people, right, and have them not notice requires millions of hours, thousands and thousands <laughs> yeah, and yeah. millions of hours. You, you watch these these performers; they say, "Well, yeah, I grew up just playing with cards in front of a mirror and watching my hands in a mirror, learning to do yeah. tricks backwards." So that I know how the audience is seeing it. Right. I'm constantly manipulating things. I'm constantly doing things. Right. The, the amount of work and performance and professional stunt work that yeah. goes into stage magic. Yeah. Especially close-up magic where I'm literally in front of you. Right. And you don't know how I'm making things disappear, reappear, move right. from point A to point B. That is just a, a peak human skill. Yeah. And yeah. then we come back to comics. Right. Where we have gods and aliens and technological marvels and nanotechnology and future tech and past tech. Right. And then we also have magic. Right. That's like, yeah, I'm still here. I, if it, high fantasy, yeah, it's real. We can, boop, it's here. Yeah. It, it strikes me as just so entertaining. But, and you get like in the first season where Wally was just like, this is guys, ab it's abracadabra, man. Yeah. Abracadabra, has abra tech. abracadabra has future tech. It's just some nonsense, pocket dimensional, blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. So there, like you're saying, Neil, like it's still questions when other things are just exactly. not. And right. it's like one of your team members, there's a school and he went to it for a long time <laughs> yes, so that he, he can do the magic he keeps doing in front of you. <laughs> but you're like, no, no, no but not uh, this though. Yeah, that's that's just, what it means. Like, just manipulating such biological widely, fields or yeah, whatever. Right? Widely accepted also completely yeah. questioned. And then you get what you were talking about about the stage magic. You get that crossover, right? Because Zatara, I mean, was a the, stage he, magician. he literally wears the suit in yeah. the show with the top hat and the whole deal because that's who he was. And Zatanna, the same, who, not they don't really show it much in Young Justice, but in like Batman the Animated Series, she was a stage magician yeah. who, who would do the stage magician stuff. And then the the real magic she'd say for when she was doing something else or if something went terribly wrong on stage, right? right? But she would still she still had those skills somehow. It would cross over between those realms. Yeah. Right. And I think as a as a person, as a reader, magic is appealing to me just because it feels skilled. It yeah. feels unique. It feels very dangerous. Yeah. And one of the things in magic in the DC universe and specifically in Young Justice, we always see that magic has that cost. It, has, yeah. it takes a toll Some on price. people. There's always a price to pay. And that seems to be very consistent in how magic is depicted across DC Comics. And I'm always very interested in the stories about consequences, about the tough choices. Yeah. And Young Justice has given us fantastic stories about tough choices. Yeah. So using a, a power source, using whatever we want to call that magic is, a theme that is about tough choices on top of the tough choices in a comic book, in a story, 
right. is just doubly interesting to me. And I just love yeah. seeing how that happened. We didn't, we didn't do the spoiler warning at the beginning, but I want to talk about season four because we've got, yeah. there's just sure. too much going on in season four, right? You've got Zatanna all has a bunch of apprentices now. Yeah. There's a whole story arc with Mary Marvel that's just like, whoa, what happens? Like, and totally surprised by that. Yeah. <laughs> Twist like, at the end, by the way. Yeah. Like this, this idea that Mary, you know, we, I talked about this with Chris, who came on to talk about Shazam on the discussion episode. And we were having this discussion about like, well, if you're a 10 year old kid, why wouldn't you just be Shazam all the time? Yeah. Right. Why don't you just be an adult all the time? So we went into a big discussion about that. And then we, then we get to season four and it was like, oh, Mary did that. Yeah. And it was bad. <laughs> it went, it went real bad because she's like, well, I'm this perfect being now. Right. Why wouldn't I do that? Yeah, exactly. I mean, they even kind of touch on that a little bit in the, the She-Hulk series that Marvel mm -hmm. did too, about like. I am two completely different people and one of them gets different reactions than this other person and what am I doing and who am I, right? But that went down a, a, to a dark place with Mary, but she was still trying to use magic that was tied to something. Like she still had a magical tendencies, but just didn't want to go do this other thing, right? Mm -hmm. And you get Tracy 13, who's got, I don't even know what they were calling it, urban city magic, luck magic, something like something that. Like that. And then we got Khalid, who's who's a practicing Muslim, who is also, and, and a medical student, <laughs> who's also practicing magic, and gets an entire discussion. I, uh, Greg was talking online to somebody about like, what did we go through? Like they they went through and spoke to organizations that deal with Muslim representation, and is this contradictory to the faith? And how could, will this be? A, you know, and they discussed with him about like. Yes, there are different people who would have different ideas and different thoughts. And how are you going to handle it and showing it to them and having them okay it and see it? And of course, like you have Zara and other voice actors who are on the show doing the voices of the characters who are also of that faith, being able to inform that. But you have that, this is a whole discussion that Hollywood has over between like his different family members about who he is and what he's doing and how he's doing it. And wasn't part of his story like how he interpreted or understood magic and it, like, yeah he didn't just say it's magic he was right. kind of defining it his own way yeah and how he's looking at it and he's also a medical student right. so he's looking at science and, and magic and putting it together there was a great book i read a while ago when i was getting when i was starting to become a nurse and looking at that becoming going nursing from veterinary school it's called the scalpel and the silver bear and it's about it's about native american student who's going to become a medical student but trying to talk about her cultural differences like in a particular tribe like touching a dead body is an issue <laughs> well how do you study medicine if you can't touch a cadaver mm -hmm. right and how you blend these things together with your faith and your idea about the things that you want to do in the world right and and how those things work it's a it's a brilliant book but i, I saw that parallel with um, with his story as well and they're all magic they're all different kinds of magic even Zatanna does different kind of magic this season. Like she's not just doing the backwards magic. She now has to do some really powerful stuff that wipes her out. Yeah. To get her into the Tower of Fate or to do other things. Yeah. Then you layer the whole fate problem on top of everything mm -hmm. of just like, oh, okay, we're all going to take turns. Never mind. How is he passing medical school by disappearing for a week? We don't have to talk about it. Apparently he figured it out. <laughs> um, He's but, very smart. But the idea that like, okay, but Mary, we can't do this because like while we have an agreement with fate, I'm pretty confident if you put it on, you'll both agree to never take it off yeah. <laughs> and give somebody else another shot. And I don't know that that's going to work for us. Yeah. So. yeah. You can totally, you can totally see Naboo saying like, oh no, she's my person. <laughs> We're going to go take care of business. She's my person. I'm also going to have her say, Shazam, then we'll put the helmet right. on. It's like, it's like, then let's party. It's like giving, it's like giving a lantern ring to, to Superman, yeah. right? It's yeah. like, just, let's not give Shazam We're fine. We're fine. Naboo's helmet but yeah, on top of all that. To layer that all on as well and like take on that burden. Right. And then what's the difference between like, say, sorcery magic of Atlantis Right versus all of these other styles in the comics, they're all kind of self-contained in their own story and their own arcs and stuff until you know, like they really started crossing characters over, mm -hmm. and then it's like, okay, well, how many different types of magic are there, and and what, and how do you study this versus that, and w what's more powerful, quote unquote, or right. more useful for certain things, and then you have the Atlanteans who were the Homo Magi, right, who exactly. were almost an entire species yeah. of that defined by their attunement to magic and ability to channel it. Exactly. And then you're learning that magic versus 
blood magic or backward speaking magic right. or chaos and order magic right. or the magic of the green right the spirit exactly. of the earth right there's all these the fact that things. we haven't touched on it in this entire conversation until now right yeah. yeah and but then to go back to what you were saying rich about how you interpret magic in your faith the fact that there can be quote magic but everyone has their own interpretation of it yeah their own version of it their own understanding of it uh-huh. it's not just i use a power suit i have a battering battering is always the same no matter who throws it Right. Super technology is always the same. It gets more and more advanced, but it's super technology. Magic to me is so cool because philosophically, how yeah. you believe, how you interpret the world right. can channel, can influence your powers, right. your superness. Yeah. How you then save the world or do whatever you want to do. Yeah. And that just is so fascinating and engaging to me because it's, it's a deeper topic. It's like if we're really going to get past just, I enjoy this comic book. I enjoy this television show. Right. If we're really going to dig into it like we do, yeah. digging into something that is so intrinsically human, how we choose to understand the world right. and how that choice, how our perception influences our world. That's a very real thing. Yeah. How, how I face my day kind of define my perception defines my reality yes. to an extent. Yeah. Seeing that same thing in comic books that then impacts magic. Right. It, that's cool. That's yeah. just really cool. It reminds me of like way back when we interviewed Quinn. And Quinn was talking about the use of psychology and linguistics to define character. Yes. Right. So if you start looking at characters like how Constantine interacts with the world of magic and the different dimensions and the demons and stuff is definition. It is defining of his character, right? As opposed to, I mean, Hawkman for that matter, depending on what origin you're looking at for him, like he might be magic, might not be because he's a reincarnated, you know, Egyptian spirit or when Zatanna, you know, merges with Isis, you know, in season two, Right. Okay. Well. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Now we're talking about Egyptian <laughs> scarab magic gods, and you know we're starting to get into all of this. It defines like who these characters, who these characters are, and how they interact with the world. So, does the magic define the character? Does the character filter and define the magic? Is it both? Like, how does how does all that work? If I remember, Tracy Thirteen's dad is like super skeptic for magic as well. Like, he's like one of those people who are actually ironically supernaturally immune to magic because his level of skepticism is so high it has become a supernatural wow. piece of his body there's something like that i'd read in a comic i don't i'm not an expert on tracy 13 but like again talk about the definition of who you are yeah. is affecting and interacting with whatever the supernatural forces are in the world well and, if you look at madame xanadu like even that transition from being a charlatan par- yeah to, parlor tricks to oh no i'm literally watching this river of souls to look for someone yeah yeah and you're just like whoa okay yeah. we've we've changed the game and now. talk about a good payoff in the show yeah 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 was that season one yeah you you've got the gift just not now yeah right yeah season four yeah. what's up yeah i got yeah. you it's too bad your aura looks real good yeah <laughs> <laughs> but then also from a writing standpoint since we always talk about writing right These choices, how you pick your magic, how it defines a character, that also informs you about the world. Right. By saying, well, here's Zatanna. She's doing magic. Cool. Right. Oh, look. Now here's this ancient Egyptian temple. Now we've learned more about the world of young justice. Right. We suddenly have this fact just exists. Right. Cool. When when Constantine is doing something and finds some weird article, some weird book, some weird scroll, some weird artifact, Mm -hmm. we now know more about the world. So while we're writing about the character and how their choices are defining the character and back and forth and back and forth, we're also using that as a tool to flesh out and inform readers about other things that exist, which makes the world more vibrant and real, even if we don't focus on it. We didn't spend time saying, well, here's this Egyptian temple with the scarabs, and here's how it got invented, blah, 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 blah. We just said, here's Egyptian stuff, and it's magic, and it messes with the scarabs. Go. Right. And we can fill in the gaps as the audience. Yes, absolutely. And the the idea that, and not just like, so you're talking about like the universe of Young Justice. Yes. And it's the universe of Young Justice, because 
this Egyptian magic shut down alien technology right. that was from a whole other world that was coming to potentially invade and take over, and now it's just been lying dormant in the form of the beetle, right? Yeah. I mean, now you've, you've got... It, it makes this layered history where you're feeling like, oh, you know, okay, the Justice Society was around World War II. That's nice. That's when superheroes and stuff started. No, there were many civilizations before all this, right? Yeah. Even, you know, Vandal and <laughs> Babylon and being Naboo's dad and, like, how all of that... Uh, that happens right and you're talking about the homo magi too like so it's a it's a skill right so you get john constantine who hey, can learn some of these things but then is zatanna a skilled human who has learned magic or does she have the genetics of a homo magi and that's the reason why right. and it seems like they haven't defined it in young justice yet no and I actually don't know if I wanted to find. And I would love to have the idea that you don't have to have the metagene to be able to do magic. Because that would kind of, I, I, don't think I'd, I don't think I'd appreciate that as much. I agree. There was even that one line, I forget what season it was in, where she, someone asked her about speaking backwards. And she said, well, how do you know that's not my natural language? Yeah. And it was just a subtle little throwaway line, kind of a quip. Right. It may have been a joke, but then you're also thinking... Okay, so is she somehow a different type of being? Yeah. And because she comes from this different plane or different background or metagene, yeah. that's her normal state. Yeah. And now she's existing in this Young Justice universe where she's acting like a human, and that's the show you're putting on. Right. Think about that movie, The it's Prestige. All part of the show. Yeah, exactly. You're yeah. living the show. Right. That's the performance. Right. Is, is that what she's doing? Is that what Zataro is doing? Uh-huh. Or is They're she... stage magicians, yeah. and just like you're talking about, right? Li yeah. Living that, that like, the prestige is a great example. Where yeah. You just, that is, that's dedication. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that's dedication. Yeah. Yeah. So, speaking of season four, because there's just so much magic in it. Yeah. What did you think about... There was the intense story arc with the child, Oof. with Clarion, with the the bus. <laughs> that ten year bus. The bus. The bus. How was long was so that on the bad. wall in oh, the writer's oh, yeah. room? Oh, God. It's just every, like three four season joke. I mean, when when you were seeing that, were you excited to see like a whole bunch of magic going on? I was there anything loved about it. it that you were like, Okay, you got it, you loved it all. I am unashamedly in love with anything <laughs> Young Justice puts on the screen. That's fair. I, I, totally fair. I don't filter it. I just love it. When, when season four got announced, when season four started airing, it was just pure joy. Every episode was shocking. Yeah. Every episode was jaw-dropped on the floor. Seeing these moments, these payoffs. Yeah. Seeing how they did the end credits. And the little huge, but huge nuggets that they would just casually throw in. Wait a minute, what was that? Rewind, rewind, rewind. Yeah. It was such a good season. Yeah, agreed. I agreed. mean, it, it, always, it always harkens back, even the whole conversation we're having, that harkens back to a theory that I have, and, and I feel like they operate under this idea that Young Justice is a world that exists, and a world that will exist without us. Sure. Just every season, we get an opportunity to look at it. Yeah, we peek in yeah, and we see, just where, peek things in, see yeah. where things are. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. we, forget, we forget how long it's been, and then we peek back in, and we're like, oh, dang, it's been five years. Wait, what? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we should have looked back sooner. But yeah. Yeah, just the idea that like, it will forever continue. Right. Will we get a look again? Like that, That's all it is. Yeah, but exactly. I loved how this were, there was such a payoff of all these storylines. Yeah. I loved how we saw such a culmination of these characters. I loved how... There were so many elements being joined together. The magic, the technology, the supers, the development. It was the, the stories we got back to with Vandal. Yeah. Vandal Savage being one of my all-time favorite characters. Yeah. Seeing this huge revelation of his impact on the Young Justice universe. Yeah. And then how that led into magic and Naboo and everything that is so crucial. Yeah. And then having this goofy bus. That is such a joke <laughs> and is now the most important dang thing yeah, ever. Yeah. God, yeah. so Amazing. good. So Amazing. good. All right, anything else you want to share with us before we head out? Because we're going to actually let Neil get on this plane. Yeah. Preferably. I thank you. 
Thank you both. Yeah. Uh, this was wonderful getting cool. together. I loved it. I'll, I'll just say on the air, whether we're going to cut it out or not, Rich, it's been such a pleasure working with you and Aww. knowing you over the years. Thanks, you man. are absolutely a role model and a hero. And it is such a pleasure to not only meet you, but talk to you and spend time. We chatted over breakfast. It has just been such an absolute joy. And I, the fact that I get, got to also do a podcast with you for a year or so, <laughs> icing on the cake. So that's awesome. Abs Thanks. Absolutely. Love try. you, buddy. Thank I'm you sorry. Too. I love you too. Yeah. We're not watching a Disney movie. Stop it. Stop it. Yes. Yes. My kids. You yes. crying again, Papa? No. Yes, you are. Okay. I mean, I just walk out of the room and oh, I guess I got I to gotta go do laundry, kiddo. She never sees it. She doesn't know. You got to be smarter They're than They're usually that. laying on me, so oh, I have a hard oh. time actually See, my kid doesn't want to. <laughs> my kid doesn't want to cuddle right now, so it's okay. Okay, okay, when, good. When she gets older, hopefully I'll get those cuddles back and then okay. I'll have to make up a good life. It's, it's a wave. It comes and goes. I'm hoping it comes back soon. <laughs> Caleb, it was awesome having you back on the show again. Yes. Thank you so much for coming and joining us. It was nice. Thank you, Neil. It was nice to be back on the show myself, Woo! actually. And uh, we miss you, Emily, but we will be back with season four as soon as we can get logistics organized. Yep. And hey, like I've said before, you're the only voice that's on every episode. Couldn't be, it wouldn't be whelmed without you. <laughs> it wouldn't and it be whelmed at the end of every episode. Yep. I'm still here. <laughs> I'm still in the cave, baby. You've been listening to Whelmed, the Young Justice Files podcast. Our hosts are Rich Howard and Emily Booza. Our editor and producer is Neil Powell. Our theme was composed by Emily Mio. Our logo was created by Kevin Bates. Whelmed is a fan-made podcast and is not officially affiliated with DC Comics, DC Entertainment, Warner Brothers Animation, and any other owners of Young Justice or its related source material. As such, these companies have sole ownership of all symbols, images, names, logos, and proprietary material related to Young Justice. Original content of this podcast is ours under Creative Commons. Thanks for listening, and stay whelmed.